So I was going through the journal. Good, you're here. So I was going through the journal and I found a prompt with three parts. And I thought maybe that's the next one we could do. I've been working on this for a while and it's gotten, it's become a little to do, if I'm going to be honest. This video is actually going to be a two-parter, two parts. How fancy. So I hope you guys stick around and then we'll have the second part coming out hopefully next week. The prompt involves bones and secrets. Let's see what we can do with that. I had several ideas for this prompt. Some involved the bones, some involved the silhouettes of the bones, so I opted to cut them out with an X-Acto knife. I hope no one is too disturbed that I disobeyed the prompt slightly. You'll see. I cut the pages from the journal, leaving an edge to reattach them later. The first part of the prompt has you cut out the bones. The second step is to piece the body back together. I aged the bones with yellow ochre. It's one of my favorite colors. It ages things so beautifully. I also added some glowing green coming from inside his skull and his rib cage. It was here that I noticed there were two left hands. Was that the case for everyone's journal or did I get lucky? I'm placing the bones deliberately so they'll all fit on one page. Don't get ahead of me. I'll explain myself when the time comes. Don't get ahead of me. I'll explain myself when the time comes. I'm sketching out a grave for our fine left-handed fellow. It seemed like the polite thing to do. Trust me, it'll make sense in a moment. Now I'm adding a rocky dirt E texture to his grave, making sure he still fits. Exacto knife. So two things happened here. I struggled greatly with the exacto knife, and I lost half the footage showing me struggling with the exacto knife. Probably for the best. In other prompt journal episodes on YouTube, they preserved the prompt, so I wanted to figure out a way to do that here. I had to cut the bones from both step one and two prompt pages. So my solution was to cut out the prompts from those pages and age them up with some yellow ochre. I'm sealing the grave with some Mod Podge because I plan on coloring it with Posca pens and I don't like how the markers react to untreated paper. They tend to break paper down with their point and harsh nibs. Sorry. Excuse me. They tend to break paper down with their paint and harsh nibs. Not point. Paint. Dirt is often brown. Ooh, shiny. I used pearl essence and green accents on the moon. Coloring the edges of the grave a darker brown to add texture. Plus some more footage. Now we come to the third and final step of this prompt. Bury the bones in a secret place. Step three got way darker than I intended.
Ah, this unbelievable disaster. I wanted to create windows through the unfinished pages so you could see the elements of all three steps and then the secret burial. The first page went down pretty easy. It was the top page. <laughs> oh, yikes. I still didn't get it completely right, but I did better on page two and three. So I wish to keep this journal together as much as possible. Also, if I did bury them in a secret place, you all would know. And while I'd trust you with my life, I hope you understand I can't trust you with my bones! So I decided to pull a double bluff and hide him in plain sight. The scene over his grave is at night, so I'm creating a night sky backdrop with grays and blues and purples and blacks. I'm also creating his gravestone. I needed to differentiate between below ground and above ground, so I added a wash of brown. Here is his secret burial place. I like the look of layered paper illustrations, so I painted everything separately and then glued them to each other. wonderful when a plan all comes together. Making sure these bones aren't going anywhere. What do you think? I would probably try to go lighter on some things if I could redo it, but other than that I'm pretty pleased. Okay, so full disclosure, this was not the first idea I had when I read the prompt. My first thoughts were, a human skeleton is all well and good, but I just studied the human body for a couple semesters in school, so how about I create my own creature? So I googled weird skulls and expanded from there. This is what I came up with with the assistance of Photoshop. If you can name all the animals he's composed of in the comments down below, you get 27 bonus points. After that I drew him digitally and now we're gonna piece them together cause I go hard. My printer ran out of black ink, but it is no matter. I'm coating it with a couple coats of Mod Podge so I can impigmentate it with Posca pens. Exacto knife. It was at that point that I realized I don't use an exacto knife very efficiently. So bring on the scissors. Bring on those scissors! Ooh, fancy. I decided he's a dragon, and I shall name him Beals. Beelzebubby. B 
Bilzy Bub. Bilzy Bubbles. That's it. That's it. Beals the Bubbles. He is Beals the Bubbles and he has bones black like obsidian. Black like obsidian. Obsidian. Again, I wanted to go for the layered paper look, so I had many separate pieces. I was then presented with the problem of how to display it. Originally, I wanted to put it in the journal, a page after the human skeleton, but Beals the Bubbles is too tall for that journal when all assembled. It was, uh oversight in the printing process and I got too far along to go back. Obsidian! 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 I outlined the edges of the joints in gold to add a little more definition. That blue thing is called a bead reamer. You're welcome. connected Bubby with the human skeleton by using some green highlights coming from inside his skull. I then began trying to create crystal growth like texture by layering the Posca pens over each other before they had dried. Does that make sense? I've heard people say that Posca pens don't blend well, but I found a video of a guy who uses them to paint surfboards and he figured out how to blend them beautifully. I still haven't figured out how he does it. This is one of the first times I'm attempting to blend, which doesn't come out exactly like his, but I do like the effect that I achieved. I'll have a link in the description to his video if I can find it again. I'm trying to be delicate because I'm going over the paint repeatedly before it's dry. Doing this is an easy way to muddy things up quickly, so I'm trying not to mix the paints too much. This way they'll interact with each other in ways they couldn't if I let each layer dry first. It's just all experimenting.
it has been pointed out to me that I've taken these prompts much, much farther than perhaps they were intended. So I started another journal. It's called Aurelius Beyond Haunt This Journal, and I'll put all the spillover into here. Let me know how I should decorate the cover in the comments down below. I'm going to create a background for Beals the Bubbles, reminiscent of the human's grave dirt. I crumpled, aged, and texturized the paper. I put little gold flakes around to represent a ground primed for forming the crystals that have grown onto his bones. Now the assembly. I pictured him clawing his way up through the dirt. I think what happened is the human skeleton used to be a man who acquired Beelzebub's tail and paid for it with his life. Now Bubby is returning from the grave to find his stolen tail. I'm still workshopping it. Now I'm securing him down. Gotta secure these bones too. Not done yet. I really like the way Cobweb's name ended up looking. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you should check out my Paint It Black episode. I decided to do the same spider webby font for Beals the Bubbles name. It was a little hard to read, so I decided to outline it in gold. And once again aged it so that the spider webs were aesthetically fitting with the rest of the piece. Isn't he pretty? Okay, full, full disclosure. I did not draw Beals the Bubbles first. Well, I think that we've messed around with that long enough for today. What do you guys think? How would you have interpreted this prompt? Would you have actually buried it somewhere in the ground? In your fishbowl? In grandma's ashes? Is that too much? 
I hope you enjoyed our descent down into the secret bones. Next time, we're gonna have Paralius Beyond Hunt's Journal. So stay tuned for that. Uh, let me know your thoughts, your feelings, your hopes, your dreams down in the comments down below. Like, comment, subscribe, please. It was good to see you. I'll catch you next time. Bye, I love you. Obsidian!